Hey, Casa Banks crew. Welcome to Unit 7, Motivation, Emotion, Stress, and Personality. A very, very large unit for us. So this is the first of what's going to turn out to be many videos for this unit. Today, we are going to talk about motivation. So first, just a little refresher. Our definition of motivation is the process by which activities are started, directed, and continued so that physical or psychological needs or wants are met. So motivation, why do we do the things that we do? Okay, pretty plain and simple. We have already talked about extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation, but just as a reminder, these are a set of confusing pairs, so you'll probably see them. Extrinsic motivation is um, uh, we're performing an activity because of some external reason. So um, we're going to get a uh, reward or our parents are making us do it, um, some sort of external reason. Intrinsic motivation is our motivation to do something because it's something we want to do. It's something we are interested in or something that um, will satisfy us if we do it. All right, so there are several different sources of motivation. So the first, biological sources. So these are things like hunger, thirst, sleep, sex, pain. Okay, These are things that our body needs uh, pretty much without thought. And then we have emotional sources. So our need for love, attachment, um, our feelings of excitement, fear, or anger. Okay, so different emotional sources of motivation. Then we have cognitive sources. So these are things like our memory. Okay, what things have we been successful with in the past? Um, our need for accomplishments, our goals. Uh, our want for success, uh, rewards over punishments. And then the last one are social sources. So this is our need to belong, our want to be recognized uh, for doing good things, following social norms, our want for power, uh, curiosity, and our need for achievement. So what I want you to do is uh, I want you to come up with an example for each one of these, a personal example, okay? Biological, emotional, cognitive, and social example of motivation. All right, so there's many theories. Um, the first theory that we're going to talk about is instinct theory. So we already know what instinct are, is. Our instinct is our biological um, need, Okay, you're, you're motivated by biologically uh, determined internal forces. So again, come up with some examples for this. The problem, the issue with instinct theory is that it really only describes our behavior. It doesn't really explain why we do the things that we do. So for example, if you take hunger, so our need to feed our bodies is innate, okay? We need food to survive. But it doesn't explain why some people eat to excess and are obese or why some people have eating disorders, okay? So have issues with what they eat. It doesn't explain why some people are vegetarian and some people are not, Okay, so that instinct theory describes the actual behavior of us eating, but it doesn't really explain why we do the things we do when it comes to hunger. Incentive theory is the next one. So again, if you think back to unit three for our learning unit, we talked about rewards and punishment. So the incentive theory builds off of that. So people are motivated by rewards or reinforcement, or they're motivated to avoid punishment. Um, so the value of the incentive is influenced by both biological and cognitive factors. So again, we might be influenced to eat because we're hungry, but we might choose to eat a wonderful homemade chocolate chip cookie because it gives us that pleasure reward. Um, incentives pull us into action, okay? pull us into action. Really important to remember that. Highlight that on your paper. The next type of theory is called drive reduction theory. So this talks about needs 
and drives. So the drive reduction theory proposes that there is a need that produces a drive and that people act in order to reduce these drives. So a need is usually biological need. Okay, so for example, right down here, we have our need, okay, food or water. Okay, and then we have our drive, which is the physiological feeling that it produces in our body. So our drive here is hunger or thirst. And then our drive reducing behavior is eating or drinking. So drives can be primary drives, such as hunger or thirst, or acquired or secondary drives. For example, the need for money, the need for good grades, the need to be valedictorian of your class. Okay, those are all acquired or secondary drives. They are not needed for survival. All right, our next theory is the arousal theory. So this says that people are motivated to maintain an optimal level of arousal or tension. So think an optimal level of stress. Uh, we haven't talked about stress yet, but a certain amount of stress is healthy. You want a certain amount of stress. And the arousal theory sort of builds off of that idea. So the level of arousal is achieved by their increasing or decreasing the stimulation and is driven by a proposed stimulus motive. More on that in just a second. Um, arousal theory is based off of the Yerkes Dodson Law. So the Yerkes Dodson Law says that for an easy task, performance is best when arousal is a little bit higher than average. Whereas for a difficult task, we want performance uh, is best when there are arousal is just a little bit below average. So individuals who consistently seek out really high levels of arousal have been labeled as sensation seekers. And we're going to do a little activity in class um, about this Yerkes Dodson Law tomorrow, which will hopefully cement that concept for you. So here we're looking at um, a, a graph that kind of explains that Yerkes Dodson Law. So our um, performance level is low and high and then we have our arousal over here which is low and high so we have if we have a very very difficult task to do something that we find very very difficult um, you know calculus maybe um, it is a lot better for us we are a lot more successful if on these difficult tasks our arousal level is just a little bit lower than normal but if we have a really, really simple, easy task, say we're talking fifth grade math, okay, um, it's a little bit better if our um, arousal level is a little bit higher. We perform a little bit better if our arousal level is a little bit higher. And like I said, we're going to do an activity tomorrow that hopefully will explain this uh, in more sort of concrete terms for you. The humanistic theory, I think, is the last theory of motivation that we're going to talk about. And this is developed by Abraham Maslow. We talked about him when we introduced the humanistic theory way back in August. Um, Maslow proposed this hierarchy of needs. And he said that individuals have to fulfill the needs in the order, and I'm going to show you the order in just a second, in order for us to reach this highest level, which he called self-actualization. So this is where you have reached your absolute fullest potential. You have done exactly what you were put on this earth to do. So Maslow referred to the times in which we seek um, self-actualization as peak experiences. So here is the, the pyramid, the hierarchy of needs. So the first level down here are physiological needs. So Maslow says that we have to fulfill these needs before we can continue climbing this pyramid. So we have to be adequately fed. We have to have water. We have to have warmth. We have to be able to sleep and sleep well before we can move on to our next set of needs, which he called safety needs. And these are our needs for security and physiological safety. So um, that we're safe in our environments, that we feel safe in our homes, those kind of things. Then we have belonging needs. So need for affiliation, need for acceptance, and need for affection. So this is love and belonging to a group. 
Then the next level are our esteem needs. So the think of self-esteem. This is feeling accomplished, feeling like we've done um, good in our lives. And then the very top of the pyramid, which Maslow says not everyone reaches this top, but the very top is this idea of self-actualization. We have achieved our highest individual potential. We are doing or have done exactly what we were put on this earth to do. Um, you don't have to write these down, but Maslow labeled these as characteristics of people who reach that self-actualization stage. Um, they have a clear perception of reality. They are accepting of themselves. They realize their potential and the potential of other people as well. Um, they concentrate on uh, the present, okay? Don't really look to the past, don't really look a lot to the future. They value privacy. They're very independent. They do develop close relationships with other people. Um, they're very democratic, not in terms of political party, but in terms of their social relationships with people. They enjoy the process of doing something as well as the end goal of doing something. They're very creative, willing to try lots of things. Uh, they tend to be non-conformist. Okay? They don't really follow the crowd, and they are not afraid to fail. They realize that in failure, they uh, learn lessons that will ultimately lead to their success. Um, so here is a chart from one of the textbooks. I'm not sure if it's yours, but um, that gives you the strengths and weaknesses for each of the theories. So for the instinct theory, we already talked about the weakness. It explains behavior, but it doesn't really give us an idea on the why. Drive reduction, strength, okay, explains our motivation to reduce arousal by meeting our basic needs, but it doesn't explain why some motivated behaviors increase our arousal. The arousal theory, okay, um, our weakness here, it doesn't explain our motivation to address more social complex needs like love. And then Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, incorporates that we have many different levels of needs or levels of motivation, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't talk about why um, we have to go through the needs in order. It doesn't really explain what happens if um, we lose something that we've already gained and we have to sort of fall back down the pyramid. Um, it doesn't really talk about the universal human motives of finding a mate and reproducing um, that our evolutionary psychologists would talk about. All right, so that is it for motivation. We will talk more about this in class tomorrow. Please remember to bring your questions into class tomorrow. Bye-bye.